What's up, Hyperfast Nation? You are in for a treat today. We have an amazing guest on the show. David Meltzer is the co-founder of Sports One Marketing and formerly served as the CEO of the renowned Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment Agency, which was the inspiration for the movie Jerry Maguire, which I'm sure you've all seen. David has been recognized by Variety Magazine as their Sports Humanitarian of the Year and awarded the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. He is also the executive producer of the brand new Bloomberg and Amazon Prime television series, The Two Minute Drill. His life mission is to empower over one billion, that's billion with a B, uh, over 1 billion people to be happy. This simple yet powerful mission has led him on an incredible journey to provide one thing, value. In all his content and communication, that's exactly what you get. As part of that mission for the past 20 years, he's been providing free weekly trainings to empower others, to empower others to be happy. Welcome to the show, David Meltzer. Welcome to the show today, David. How are you doing? Amazing. I'm so happy to be here and excited to see what we're going to get going. Yeah, uh, we, we're, we're thrilled to have you on. This show, usually, you know, we're getting sales agents on the real estate side. So it's, it's always special when we get someone like yourself who's, uh, you know, reached the pinnacle, but in a different industry. So uh, why don't you give folks a little bit of a background on, on who you are and what you're up to these days. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, today I'm an entrepreneur, author, speaker, a producer of several different TV shows, movies. Uh, but I started going to law school and I was going to be an oil and gas litigator so I could be rich enough to buy my mom a house in a car, smart enough to not be a lawyer when I graduated and to get into technology and ended up uh, my first company, we exited for 3.4 billion in 1995, uh, sold to Thomson Reuters, and then went to the Silicon Valley. And by the time I was 30, uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, multimillionaire, worked uh, for Samsung's first phone division. I was the CEO of the world's first smartphone in 1999, before there was actually smartphones. But then from there, I uh, became uh, an investor in real estate. So. Uh, I'd always say one of the biggest mistakes I made, I got too busy to take my own broker's license. I was a lawyer, it wasn't even that hard, but I got too busy what I thought, you know, working to make money. And so I owned over $100 million in real estate when I met Lee Steinberg, uh, the most notable sports agent in the world, became CEO of that agency where I met Warren Moon, uh, the Hall of Fame quarterback. And the last 12 years, we built a uh, fairly large global sports marketing agency the last four years, I've taken all of the skills, knowledge, and desire that I had and put it to my own personal brand uh, with all of those things from books and speeches and TV shows, movies and content. Simple one purpose to empower others, to empower others, to be happy. In other words, I teach people to make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. That simple. How do you how do you teach them to do that? What are what are some of the the top things? Yeah, so I'm very pragmatic in the way that I do. One is to understand value. So I teach gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration within the context of five daily practices. And more than happy to to share those here. But also anyone that wants me to send them those five daily practices or values just email me, david at dmelter.com. I'll send everybody my books for free. Anything, everything I do is for free because I'm on a mission to change the world through making them happy with these with these values and daily practices. So what, uh, yeah, let's, let's get into them a little bit here. And I, and I know uh, that was a generous offer to for, for people to, to get them uh, more details on it, but uh, what what are they? Yeah, so the first, like I said, four values, which are the pinnacle or the, the pillars of everything is gratitude, uh, which is to me a superpower to find the light, the love and the lessons in everything. 
Uh, so gratitude is the most powerful thing that you can do. Simply say thank you before you go to bed and when you wake up, your life will change. The second one is forgiveness, which brings peace. It also brings certainty. So I'm on a mission always to forgive the unforgivable. I don't forgive other people because they deserve it. I do it because I deserve it. And I want the greatest, clearest connection to the greatest source of light, love, and lessons if I'm going to use gratitude to search or seek for it. Accountability. Most people live, I'm a lawyer, so uh, I think real estate agents as well would get this. Most people live in liability, blame, shame, and justification. I teach accountability, taking complete control of every situation by asking yourself, what did I do to attract this to myself and what am I supposed to learn from it? And then finally, understanding and distinguishing between motivation and inspiration. Motivation will get you up, get you back up, get you started, get you back started. Inspiration will get you there. So teaching people they are already healthy. They're already wealthy. They're already happy. What are you doing to interfere with that? And so what I did is instituted these five daily practices in order to effectuate those values. Number one, Know your what. Everyone's stuck on their why. Uh, if you know your what and take inventory of your what, what do I want personally today? What do I want to experience today? What do I want to give today? What do I want to provide value, service, productivity? And what do I want to receive? Most importantly, you can't give what you don't have. Most people are afraid of receiving, afraid of asking, and don't feel worthy of what they've received. That's actually why I went on a downward spiral and lost everything. I lost over $100 million, uh, especially in real estate, simply because I wasn't able to receive. So if you know your what as a first step, now you can know your who. Uh, and Knowing your who is uh, not just who can help you, but who you can help as well. And so if you know those two things, you'll be able to effectuate abundance, a lot more value, especially in real estate. A lot of people don't take the approach of being of service or value to others, finding out what it is that people like and don't like and what they can do to provide that differential, that deference in there. Then also knowing your how. Uh, I have a mathematical equation of luck. What you pay attention to and give intention to what you think, say, do, and believe will create the coincidences you want, a mathematical equation. Finally, knowing your now. Uh, so I teach how to prioritize by importance versus urgency, like Eisenhower's matrix. And then finally, a entire practice on ending fear, knowing your why. So if you take those four values, you know your what, your who, your how, your now, and your why, you can effectuate making a ton of money, helping a ton of people, and having a ton of fun. What do you think people struggle with the most when it comes to the four values? Because I, th I think this is a really interesting framework that you've created. You know, I think people are naturally grateful. Uh, practicing gratitude, they struggle with. You know, even me, I tell people to say thank you every day. It took me nine months before I could say thank you for 30 straight days before I went to bed and when I wake up. Uh, forgiveness is something to work with, but I find accountability uh, to be the hardest one. It's so easy to live in a world of liability where we're blaming people, we live in shame, we don't have the worthiness, we don't love ourselves, and we justify everything. It's so easy to hide behind that liability. So on those four values, I think accountability is the most difficult of the four values. Do, do you think that's just kind of the nature of some of the things in society that maybe people have drifted to that where it's you know, I'm not going to take ownership. It's not my fault. Or what, yeah, why think, do you think I, it is? Yeah, I think because people don't realize that they're in control when they take accountability, that we did, we're not teaching the paradigm of that freedom of control, that when we actually allow things to happen, knowing that we are accountable for having it in our lives. In other words, when we're seeking the light, the love and the lessons, we're using faith itself as a GPS so we put the destination of where we want to go in. And what most people do is when they have a setback, a mistake or pain, they stop and they blame other people. Oh, well, if this didn't have economy didn't go down, the market didn't, you know, you know, you know, the real estate agents, for example, to put it in the context of your audience. Hey, hold that thought. Do you want to get a hundred tips? for free from my best selling real estate book, The Hyper Local, Hyper Fast Real Estate Agent. If you do, go to hyperfasttips.com and you can download 100 of my best tips today. Again, that's hyperfasttips.com. You can download 100 tips on how to grow your business, get more clients, deliver more value to more people. Go to hyperfasttips.com. When the market's hot, 
the people who live in blame, shame, justification, well, there's no, there's no properties to sell. And then when the market's cool, well, there's no buyers, there's nobody out there. Why is it that guys like Ryan Surhan are making more money than ever right now, selling 30, 50, $60 million properties a day when other people can't find any properties to sell? Because they are accountable. They're looking for the light, the love, and the lessons in every situation. They see great change as great opportunity. They don't look at what's missing, what they don't have, what other people think. They actually are voting for what they want and they're taking action, utilizing the law of Goya, getting off their ass and making it happen. And you and I both know that's the difference between successful agents in all fields, successful salespeople in all fields, is they actually understand where their capabilities are synergistic or supplementary to what's doing well now, not looking at what's missing. How did you come up with this framework, these four values? Was it, you know, kind of things you learned over your career or from other people or mentors or, or just things you, you know saw in happened. business? I, I, I learned these things over a lifetime, but the real catalyst to codifying them and living by them was when I was a multi multi-millionaire uh, working for Lee Steinberg. So not only did I have everything monetarily I wanted, but I had access to anyone and anything I wanted from Super Bowl, Pro Bowl, Masters, Kentucky Derby, Breeders' Cup, ESPYs, Emmys, Oscars, Grammys. I could do anything with anyone and I could afford to do it in class. Well, I was ignoring the most important things in my life. And so one night I came home from the Grammy Awards partying with Little John the Rapper and my wife was waiting for me at 5.30 in the morning to tell me she wasn't happy and to tell me that she was leaving me and to tell me that I better take stock in who I was and what I wanted to become. And so uh, initially I got mad. I went into blame, shame, and justification, asked her or told her, are you kidding me? Look around you. You know, how dare you tell me you're not happy? I gave all this to you. I woke up in the morning still thinking money buys love and happiness, thinking about getting divorced. And then realized uh, as I witnessed the jacket that my dad gave me to remind me that money doesn't buy love and happiness, he took out the pockets of the jacket to tell me that you can't take anything with you. That was the catalyst, my wife telling me she wasn't happy, that I sat down for an entire day thinking about what were the guideposts, what were the pillars that I was gonna live by, how and what were my non-negotiables that made me who I was, that took me to the point of such great wealth, health, and happiness, and now have spiraled into this lost abyss of buying things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like, this shallow, scarce world. And so those four values that I codified gave me the key to the world of more than enough, an abundant world of more than enough of everything for everyone. Wow, that's, uh, I mean, that, that must've been pretty shocking for you know a, a guy like, like, like you, kind of the height of power and, and, and just well, especially hobnobbing you know, with all these athletes, musicians, and, and then to, to, to have that kind of wake up call, um, to something else. Yeah, it was. Well, and you know, it's funny because I hit rock bottom two years before I lost everything. So, you know, interesting enough, a lot of people look at my bankruptcy when I lost over a hundred million dollars, I owned a golf course, a ski mountain, multiple properties, uh, that that was my low point. I actually say that my, my bottom was that day uh, right there when my wife told me, you know, that I wasn't who I thought I was, that I was living in fear, that I was living in scarcity, and that I was, you know, a liar, a cheater, a manipulator, overseller, and backend seller. And once I took accountability for who I was, I was quite capable of handling losing everything. And that's why I made it back so quickly, shifting the paradigm of the world of abundance by, you know, receiving so I can give, not giving with trading and negotiation so I can receive. So that, that wake up call or whatever you want to call it from your wife, that came before you lost everything financially. Two years, you know, it takes a while to lose that much money. But yeah, two years before I was already set forth in the right direction, but I had some lessons to learn. Like I said, I use faith as a, uh, a GPS that allows me to reroute when things go wrong, mistakes, failures, setbacks. I have faith that I'm going to turn out into somewhere better, a better position that if I learn the lesson, you know, pain's just an indicator. It's a turn signal that I have a lesson to learn. That bankruptcy was just a turn signal that I had lessons to learn and how to create abundance the right way by being of service to others. Can you, can you walk us through kind of like how that happened and then, and then how you turned it around? I think, I think that would be 
really valuable yeah, so for what, people to hear. What happened was, is I had extended out and bought multiple properties at a really good time. So, you know, I had made a lot of money on my properties and I decided that I'd leverage against those to buy more properties, which was fine. I bought them right. They were profitable. Uh, my golf course was the eighth best in the nation. Sam Snead design course, developing a convention center, houses around it, 2000 acres in Virginia. But what happened was I got into a lawsuit and I let my ego take over and I started spending all my liquidity on the lawsuit to prove that I was right. Uh, and I also didn't ask for help. So I always thought that, you know, my bank would instantly give me five or $10 million because I had at least $40 million of equity uh, that was viable for financing and always thought no matter what, well, when 2008 came around, I was out of cash and I went to my private bank to go get more cash and they laughed at me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa I got, you know, you know, $40 million here, let me leverage it. They're like, no, you don't. And the bank's going under and why don't you go somewhere else for money? And, you know, when you have 33 homes and a ski, a ski mountain and a golf course, things move very quickly and nobody wants to let someone borrow money that needs money. And I had no mentorship, no guidance and things started spiraling in my cash. I had to keep on, I ended up having a malpractice in my lawsuit and all kinds of, I mean, the universe was just throwing all the lessons at me. You know, I always say when you have a well-developed pl plan, you're just asking God to laugh at you. Well, he was laughing hysterically uh, and everything was spiraling uh, economically for me, even though I had a job running, you know, the most notable sports agency and had a good income, you know, when you have that much going on, uh, there was no recovering. And so I actually, you know, closed it out, just wanted a fresh start. Uh, and it didn't take me too long, a couple of weeks to make my first couple million back and recover, but I did it with a different perspective. Uh, in this time around, I did it with abundance in mind of providing value of service and receiving so I could give, not trying to give so I could get acknowledgement, trading, net recognition, and negotiation. So it sounds like abundance, having an abundance mindset and having uh, the attitude of, of giving, asking like, how can I give to others? Those two things seem to, to be a common thread between what you teach and really what helps you rebound from, from losing everything. Yeah, you know, Dan, what's interesting is I created a simple template for people to utilize to figure that out. So especially useful in real estate. Hey, hold that thought for a minute. Do you want to take your real estate business to the next level? If you do, there's no reason to go it alone. Learn from people who've been where you want to go. Carrie and I have sold billions of dollars in real estate. We've netted over seven figures for seven years in a row now. And we wanna see if you would be a good fit to work for us. We don't work with a lot of people, but we wanna give you a chance to get on a free strategy call to see if we can help you get your business to the next level. Go to hyperfastcoach.com and apply for your discovery session today. Again, that's hyperfastcoach.com. You know, if you're going to ask someone, tell me what you're looking for today. Tell me what you're doing today. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Would it help you if, and then give your capability into that insertion there and then be able to ask for help by saying, Hey, do you know anyone that could help me? See what happens is, especially in real estate, most people, they spend the majority of their time talking to closed minds and trying to convince a closed mind or a gatekeeper. Instead, what I'm always searching for is an open mind. The majority of the people have open minds and I have a very small ask of people with an open mind. It's simply, do you know anyone that can help me? Uh, you know, and then I can determine if someone's a sponsor of mine, meaning, yeah, I know someone, my friend, so-and-so is buying a property, selling a property, financing it, whatever it is that you do in the context of real estate, but also there's power sponsors out there. Hey, not only do I know people that you can help, I need your help. And if you're asking in person on the phone via email, media, traditional, digital media, you can increase your statistical success, exponentially build a pipeline of common thinking of like-minded people who are looking to be of service or value, looking to help you. And you'll keep attracting with the accountability, gratitude and forgiveness, all these people, which is the differentiator, the distinction between those people that are doing well today during the pandemic, especially in real estate, and those people that are lost, suffering, and spiraling. 
I think that's that's kind of something that's interesting to talk about. This this event, this you know the the pandemic, the lockdowns, the all the responses to it. Uh, it, it seems it almost made a, a like a bifurcated uh, you know results within even some industries. Like some some restaurant owners are you know immediately switched to takeout and 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 pivoted and did did really well. You know our real estate team. Has had our best year ever, and, and this year looks like it's going to be even better. Uh, other, you know, other people, you know, like you said earlier, complained about not being able to to find homes or do showings, and and I, and I think if you looked at a lot of different industries, you'd you'd see like the same event caused dramatically different responses responses and results with within the same you know industries even. Why like why do you think that is? Well, because the people like you that realize I have control of my mindset, right? I have control of the way I'm gonna think about this, the way I see this. You have control of your heart set, the way you feel about it. And you have control of your capabilities, your skills, your knowledge and your desire. And people like you aligned all of that with what was gonna do well. And you executed on it, just like the restaurant owner that aligned with takeout and pickup, right? Those were the things that were gonna do better during the pandemic and they use their mindset, their heart set and their capabilities, their conscious capabilities to execute on it. And then there was other people that, you know, as an accelerant just continued to see the voids, the shortages, the obstacles, what's missing in the pandemic. And they did not see the opportunity because they didn't know they had control of the mindset. They couldn't shift their paradigm of perspective. They didn't know they had control the way they felt so they allowed fear to overwhelm them to create interferences voids and shortages and they did not align and understand they had control of their capabilities all you had to do like you did i'm sure is look at here's the skills our team has here's the knowledge of who and what we have and here's our desire how does it best align with where the market is and where it's going because of the pandemic interest rates are low inventory is low where can we use our capabilities in order to effectuate more opportunities? Because as you know, if you're able to focus in on getting the listings, when the inventory is low, it's the easiest time to sell a property. People are lining up, it's going above the pricing. Well, so you shifted your you know, paradigm into getting those listings instead of marketing in a different direction or whatever these other firms are doing by not changing or accelerating their mindset, heart set and capabilities aligned with what's going on. You've, you've had a, you know, a, a variety of experiences that we've talked about today. Um, what do you think's been the most rewarding one for you out of everything you've done in, in your career? You know, for me, I'm the chairman of the Unstoppable Foundation. I'm also the chief chancellor of Junior Achievement University. We have over 100 million uh, alumni. It's one of the biggest NGOs in the world. Uh, the money that I've been able to raise uh, for those two charities, one, I've built community centers uh, in Africa, which has changed thousands and thousands of lives. I've put together the greatest chancellors of information on earth from Bob Proctor to Brian Tracy to Mary Morrissey to Sharon Lecter, uh, un, you know, Les Brown, unbelievable people uh, that have given their content to the younger generations. My biggest contribution is the legacy uh, internationally between Unstoppable and Junior Achievement. And those, those are organizations you're just, you're te training the younger, you know, generations coming up, giving them the information that will allow them to have more success and more happiness. It's the biggest entrepreneurial from kids from 15 to 25, uh, teaching them how to start a business, financial literacy, how to raise money, pitch competitions, all types of practical matters with mentorship uh, to help build and support entrepreneurs and making money, helping people and having fun. Well, it sounds, I mean, it sounds like that will be, you know, out of everything you've done, that will really give you an opportunity to change lives. And, and at the numbers you're talking on, on a massive schedule because, or massive uh, level, because, you know, you, you teach one entrepreneur, right? Just, just one. And, and, you know, if that person succeeds, they go out, they, they, you know, give, give jobs to other people, you know, 
contractors get jobs from them, the clients get get stuff, it helps their family, their community. So the, the ripple effects from, from just one of those, you know, succeeding uh, is just tremendous to think about. So to, to do it on the, the level that you're doing is gonna be truly impactful. Well, that's my goal to empower over a billion people to be happy. Looking, you know, Dan, for a thousand people like you, that I know can help empower a thousand people to empower a thousand people. So a thousand times a thousand is a million, a million times a thousand is a billion. If I can create a collective consciousness of people who wanna make money, help people and have fun, if I can change the perspective of over a billion people, it'll change the world. You know, one particle of light overcomes millions of particles of darkness. You're one of those particles of light that I can empower or liberate to light other people's candles as well. And I think it's really important to recognize and acknowledge how empowerment is so important in teaching other people these basic values, constructs of these daily practices that can literally consistently, persistently change people's lives. Well, I, lo I love the uh, the frameworks, the the values, the the lessons. Appreciate everything that you've delivered here to our audience today. I always end with, a, and I know our time's running up, but I always end with a hyper fast round. If you're ready for some quick questions love and it. answers, I love it. Let's uh, do it. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new real estate agent? Ask for help in person, on the phone, via email, and social media. Keep asking. You can't ask big enough, and you can't ask often enough. What about an experienced real estate agent? Ask for help. And beyond the original, give help, meaning mentor these starting agents themselves. You will learn more by elevating others. You will elevate yourself. I know we've, we've talked about a couple of challenges that you went through uh, earlier. What's another challenge we haven't you know, covered so far? And what did you learn from it or how did you overcome it? my biggest challenge still today is I have a need to be offended. Uh, <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, I know it's an easy need to be fed, but it's the e for me, if I can stop when I have a need to be offended and put myself back into my higher self, my center, my neutral, and not waste all the time, emotion, energy, and money that I've wasted in the past by being offended by other people's experience and journey or what they've said, attacks, conditions, or judgments upon my journey, I would have so much more time, emotion, and energy and money towards what I want instead of worrying about being offended. When you are not working on everything that you do, you're involved in a lot of stuff, what do you do for fun? So first of all, I don't believe in work. So I believe in activity. I get paid for activity I don't get paid for. I vacation every single day. My favorite thing to do is anything with my family. Um, so coaching, exercising. I have a 55 Ford Thunderbird that I steal from my wife and I cruise down PCH and sit at the Ritz Carlton for an hour, looking over the cliffs, meditating, all these different things. But one piece of advice, vacation every day, take a minimum of amount of time every day and vacation every day. And you won't need to take six weeks off. You'll never get burned out. I love that concept. Uh, last one here. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Uh, first of all, very healthy uh, and uh, helping as many people as I can. I see my community growing, my brand growing, so that more people uh, for free, like I said, can email me, david at dmelter.com. Books, guides, exercises, TV shows, all that stuff growing. A big community of people that are hyper-focused on making money to help people, and most importantly, being happy and having fun. Well, that will be exciting to see. Thank you so much for all of the value you've provided to our listeners and viewers on YouTube today. Before we sign off, if people want to connect uh, or learn more about what you do or, or uh, you know, get some of your, your free training, how can they do all that? David at dmeltzer.com. Just email me or Google my name, David Meltzer, but david at dmeltzer.com. I answer all my emails myself. Like I said, I send everything for free. I'll sign a book, ship it, pay for shipping, ebook, audiobook. All my exercises and guides are free. david at dmeltzer.com. Free trainings every Friday. And I have one of the top podcasts called The Playbook. You can download it. It has all the trainings featured on every platform, entrepreneur, Spotify, Google, et cetera, Apple, of course. Please reach out to me. Ask for help. david at dmeltzer.com. Thank you, David. That's uh, very generous of, of you. And, and uh, thank you again for your time and all the lessons you learned today. To all of our listeners and viewers out there, thank you so much. 
Make sure you tune in next time. We'll see you again. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest hyperfashions. And remember, we love reviews. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want to see more, click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And leave some comments about what you think on the videos. 